Earth scientists study processes that occur in the intersection of the four major Earth spheres. The hydrosphere, which involves all water on Earth in solid, liquid, or vapor form. The biosphere, which involves all life on Earth. The geosphere, which involves the solid part of the Earth from its surface to its core. And the atmosphere, which involves the layer of gas that envelops the Earth. In this unit, we will focus on the application of inverse trigonometric functions, the law of sines, and the law of cosines to understanding our blue planet. Earth scientists use these functions to model and predict processes that are cyclical, such as seasonal changes, or to solve physical problems that are triangular or can be modeled as such. The ocean is the defining physical feature on our planet, covering approximately 70% of the planet's surface. The ocean is also important to life on Earth. The ocean and the organisms that live within it produce 50% of the oxygen we breathe. The ocean regulates climate and provides an important source of food. Oceanography is a branch of science that applies concepts from chemistry, geology, meteorology, biology, and physics to study the ocean. Oceanographers come from a variety of fields and apply their knowledge to help us better understand processes in the ocean that impact our entire planet. My name is Claudia Benitez Nelson and I am a professor in the School of the Earth, Ocean and Environment at the University of South Carolina and I also serve as an Associate Dean in the College of Arts and Sciences. My research is in marine biogeochemistry and centers around understanding how materials move from the surface ocean to the deep waters and from the land to sea. So as such, my work touches on many aspects of oceanography and includes studies on the sources of nutrients and contaminants to the coastal ocean via groundwater, uh, the production, bioaccumulation and transport of heavy metals and harmful algal bloom toxins, and the storage of carbon in the deep sea with regards to climate change. So how did I get interested in oceanography? I actually came to the field of oceanography relatively late. I was majoring in chemistry at the University of Washington when I took an oceanography course on a whim and it fit my schedule. I thought it would be easy and all about whales and dolphins. And I was so surprised to learn that it was so much more. And I fell in love with understanding how the earth works and my professor at the time, and he told me how I could apply all of that chemistry knowledge to help solve ocean-related questions. He put me in touch with an advisor, another faculty member whose lab I worked in, and I never looked back, and I have the best job in the world. So my work is really all about the environment. Uh, in order to protect our oceans, we must understand how they work. Only then can we change or moderate um, our current activities to protect it. And because I'm fundamentally a chemist at heart, my work provides insight into the cycling of nutrients that are critical for life, food sources for higher organisms like fish, whales, dolphins, sea lions, and how toxins and pollutants like mercury um, enter the marine realm and maybe even the food that we eat. Trigonometry plays an important role in the physical processes in the ocean, including how ocean currents move or how hurricanes form in their ultimate paths. The Coriolis effect is a phenomenon that causes freely moving objects on Earth's surface to be deflected from their intended path. This apparent deflection is due to the rotation of the Earth, which exerts a force on the objects called the Coriolis force. The strength of the Coriolis effect how much an object will be deflected depends on the object's location on Earth. The Coriolis force is zero at the equator and stronger closer to the poles, which can be calculated using a sine function. By understanding the Coriolis force, we know where hurricanes typically form and can predict and model the hurricane's path, allowing for early warnings to people within those paths. Major ocean currents move in circular patterns called gyres, due in part to the same Coriolis effect. These ocean gyres transport water, nutrients, and also floating debris in the ocean. Because they move in a circular pattern, gyres can act as an accumulation zone for buoyant plastic that enter the ocean from the land. 
Oceanographers use computer models to study and track levels of plastic pollution and where they come from. Some models use grids made of triangles to recreate surfaces. When grids are made of triangles instead of rectangles, they can accurately recreate surfaces. The special trigonometric relationships of triangles make triangular grids more computationally efficient, requiring less memory and thus faster runtimes for computer programs. Because of this, triangular grids are also used to create graphics in many 3D video games. Temperatures on Earth change with the seasons, reaching highs in the summer and lows in the winter. Similarly, there are processes in the ocean that are affected by Earth's temperature, such as the level of dissolved oxygen in the water, that also change with the seasons. Oxygen more readily dissolves in water that is colder, thus oxygen levels in water are high in the winter and low in the summer. Due to the cyclical nature of these types of processes, they are often modeled and predicted using sine or cosine waves. Changes in oxygen levels are important for commercial fishing, as sea animals need dissolved oxygen to survive. Most of the oxygen on Earth is produced in the ocean by organisms called phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are microscopic plants that float in shallow ocean waters and photosynthesize, the process where plants use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to produce oxygen and energy in the form of sugars. Plankton also form the base of the food chain in the ocean and are important for larger animals such as fish. Because of their importance, oceanographers study plankton and the movement of nutrients that are important to their livelihood. Oceanographers collect plankton, water samples, and other material in the ocean to study plankton biology, nutrient levels, or water chemistry. In order to accurately do these studies, it is not only important to collect the samples, but to have a good understanding of where the samples come from, the timing of their collection, and how big an area the samples are collected over. Most of my work is a combination of field and laboratory based. I spend a lot of time either on research vessels or along coast collecting samples and then bringing them back to the lab to examine their chemical composition because I am a chemist by training. Uh, so we use a variety of instruments that tell us about the chemicals in the sample. We'll use radioactive elements. Those are elements that are naturally unstable and decay over time to trace the rates over which those processes occur. So like particles sinking through the water column to the sea floor, how fast do they sink? Uh, or the rate at which groundwater flows from the land to the coastal ocean. How much groundwater? What's the rate of that groundwater? So that allows us to know not just the composition, but the movement and the flux of material from one spot to another. One of the ways in which we look at how material moves from the surface ocean to depth is using sediment traps. And these are essentially big garbage collectors that we allow to sit out in the ocean and just collect material as it passively sinks through the water. And they're actually in the shape of an inverted triangle. So we use trigonometry to determine the area from which particles could have come from. So the area or inverted triangle uh, increases as the depth of the sediment trap increases. And sometimes we need to adjust the type of triangle that we're using depending on the motion of the ocean that's above it. So we might use an isosceles triangle versus a scaling triangle. Uh, and all of that together allows us to determine where the particles have come from. 